Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at joining to derived tables. Now if you do want to follow along with this video this code to set up the scenarios is available in the description. You just need to copy and paste it into SQL Server and just execute that query and then you'll be able to follow along. Now if you're not familiar with derived tables, I will put a link in the top right hand corner so you can go and check out how to create derived tables first of all. Now what I'm simply doing here is having a look at a query that joins customers to orders. Now what I want to do is for each customer I want to get the count of their orders and the total amount. And once I've done that, I want to do something with that aggregate data. Perhaps I want to add a case statement on top of that to see when customers spend or a certain amount or have placed so many orders with us, they'd be eligible for a discount. Now, one option we've got is to simply group the data. So in this case, we're joining customers to orders. So one customer can place many orders. It's a one-to-many relationship. Now, if we have a look at how we could write this out with a group by, so we could add in customer key, customer first name. Uh, the customer table does contain a combination of people and businesses as well identified by the cust customer type column so I'll include that uh, and then I simply want okay count of ord dot order key as number of orders and then some order amount as total amount and then we need to copy these columns into uh, group by so if I write out group by I'll just hide the results grid for now so that shows better on screen uh, just align that a bit better now that is the results that I wanted with a, a simple group by there but how about if I wanted to say, okay, when let's add a, I don't know, a case expression to say case when number of orders greater than equal to three, then gold. Um, let's just space out this case statement a bit. So we're just classifying our, our customers effectively at this stage uh, when number of orders greater than equal to two then silver else bronze end as class and if I go ahead and run this query now it's not going to be able to use that data so because that is part of the query what we'd actually have to do this number of orders column is only built in the select statement so when we're using something else in the select statement um, to refer to that column we can't actually do that um, so we could refer to that that count multiple times so we could say count ord dot order key greater than three and count ord dot order key greater than two. So we could see we could get the same results there, um, but I think this is looking sort of a, a bit messy. We're potentially running that that count there effectively three times. So let's have a look at how we could write this query within a derived table. What would our options be? Well, if, if we look, all we're retrieving from the orders table is actually 
aggregate values. Uh, in this case, a count of the order key uh, and a sum of the order amount. So how about if we could drop that a layer into the actual join itself? So if we were to rewrite this query, and I'll take all this away, uh, I will leave a copy of this query in the description though so you can see the difference. So if we were to start with our original query, but instead of in a join to the orders table, we're actually going to turn that into a derived table that we're going to join to. Now it's important here to consider what we need to join on. So we know we need uh, a count of order key and a sum of order amount, but we need to be able to join that on customer. So we're going to write our order by effectively here. So we're going to have customer key, we're going to have count order key, and then we're going to have some order amount, and we must add aliases to our derived table. So I think I called that total amount, and this was number of orders. That's going to come from our orders table. We're then going to close off those parentheses. Uh, we're still going to alias that as ord, and then we're going to be joining on our customer key in both tables. So if I was to execute that now, I don't need to enter my uh, select columns. I've just forgot to add the. Uh, I need to add the group by within the derived table here. So at this point, we're just grouping by customer key. Um, I'll just hide the results grid to see that. So that looks a lot less complex. So we've got our customer key, number of orders, total amount, and we could write out a, a case statement exactly the same. So case when uh, number of orders greater than or equal to three, then gold. I'll just copy this to change it for silver. I think that was greater than or equal to two. Then silver. Else bronze and as class. And there we've got exactly the same results, but it, dropping that aggregation into a derived table that we join to gives us a bit more flexibility within the select clause as to what we actually want to do. Um, so that's a typical good example if you want to run things like uh, window functions on top of aggregates and things like that. So anything declared within the select clause that we need to then perform another operation on. Have a look at adding a derived table and then joining to that. Once again, I will leave a copy of this code available in the description. Um, and let me know your thoughts on that. Do you join to derive tables? Or do you join tables and then add a group by? I'd love to get your thoughts in the comments below. If you do want to see more videos on data engineering, data analysis, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.